Welcome to the Idea Gen Future of Global Summit here in Washington, D.C., live at the NED. Here today with Daniel Kolchik, Man Manager, Government Relations. Daniel, welcome. Yeah, hi, how are you? Great to see you. So, Daniel, you're dealing with government affairs on behalf of Covestro here in Washington. What are you doing specifically to drive the sustainability goals over the next decade? Yeah, sure. So Covestro is a global chemical company. We make polyurethanes and polycarbonates. Our products are in everything you touch and see. Our company slogan is you're never six feet away from a Covestro product. And so when you think of that context, think of us as a major global producer of these chemicals. Our global circularity and sustainability goals originate in all the markets where we operate, but they have to be consistent across. And so for us here in DC, um, as, as a government affairs team, our goal is to make sure that policymakers are aware of what our priorities are and ensuring that we can get some level of global alignment across the business entities across the, across the world. And so for us, we're constantly reinforcing the need for government to both invest in, but also promote and support new investments in these technologies that help us as a company to meet our goals, but also help the industry to transition into that direction and continue to grow our, our overall footprint um, as a leader in that space. And yeah. And so in terms of policies and regulations, what are the most critical to enabling the circular economy and with that innovation in the United States specifically? Yeah, I think for us, a, you know, a big element is finding a way to help offset a lot of the costs associated with both the scale up of those new technologies, but also a, a regulatory environment that encourages new technologies. You know, and we see this not only in the chemical industry, but across industries that, you know, a lot of times the barrier to getting a new product to market, be it a chemical or be it a pharmaceutical product is government um, in, in a lot of ways. You know, there's maybe a, a lack of understanding of what the benefits of a, of a new product are. There may be a long queue of chemicals or products that are in, a, in a, an approval stream. Um, and so for us, you know, we see the need for government to continue to find ways to allow for that innovation to take place. Um, and I think, you know, in this current environment, um, we're confident that, um, you know, we have some of the best uh, scientists, some of the best innovations right here in the US. We have a great regulatory framework to help bring a lot of these products to market. We just really need that impetus from policymakers to encourage companies and, and support that scale up so we can be prepared for the future. Well, that's an incredible trajectory and, and wide range of issues that you're dealing with from everything from plastics to transportation, right? Yeah. And so how do you prioritize a message these in such a complex policy environment? And you mentioned like, how do you rise above the din in this yeah. complex policy environment? Yeah, it's, it is, it, it can certainly be a challenge. I mean, I think for us, you know, we look at as a company that pr that provides our inputs into pretty much everything, every end market, you know, but let's take automobiles, for example, you know, the future of cars are that they're getting bigger, they're getting heavier. Um, they may be converting to different energy um, propulsion systems. So electric vehicles or internal combustion. And, you know, with that transition, as things get bigger, they need to be safer. We at, at Covestro, we're able to produce new polymers that can help to lightweight an automobile that can deal with the different thermal um, cap the thermal capacities of these plastics that can help to encourage and allow for new technologies to be adopted. And so we need government to understand that and recognize that, but we also need a um, continued push by our, our peers in the industry to showcase what the benefits of, of using those, those polymers are. Um, and so, you know, for us, it's, it's really getting an understanding of being able to show what those benefits are to policymakers. Um, and, and also, you know, change the, the understanding of, it's not necessarily that, you know, this is a plastic, um, which may to some people have a, have a different connotation, but it's, it's a high tech um, new technology that can help and deliver on those results. So. 
It's incredible perspective, Daniel. And so how do you work with internal teams at Covestro mm -hmm. to translate this policy into action? Yeah. And, you know, really at the facility and R&D level. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, I'm not a chemist, right, here in D.C. We're, we're, we're not uh, science experts, but we do rely on very strongly our folks both in our R&D department, our regulatory affairs department, and also right on the on our sites all across the U.S. and across the globe to help to explain to us what we need to be telling policymakers. Um, and so, you know, I think our goal is to be sort of that um, that driver of, of information and we can help mm -hmm. to translate very complex. As you said, these things are becoming more complex as, as time goes on and as technologies evolve. Um, so we're trying to, you know, work with them, but helping to refine the message and how we communicate that at a high level to policymakers. And so we do work very closely with our internal folks on that. And then how do you take that policy development and influence, et cetera, in terms of that with the influence on your innovation strategy? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we, and sort of coming back to what we said earlier, we need government to be a driver of innovation. We need them to support an environment in which companies can continue to innovate and be able to bring these products to market. And so I think by having that internal connection um, and, and really showcasing, you know, there's a there's a, a real opportunity for us to to bring products that we we're innovators. We've been innovators since our roots as a company, uh, dating back, you know, um, to the original foundation of polyurethane back in in the 1930s or to polycarbonate back in the 1950s. We want to continue to scale up these new technologies to adopt to what our customers want. Um, and to do that, we do need that, that support from government, but we also need our, our internal uh, R&D and our scientists who are you know, very, very, um, very much experts in this space to help us bring those, bring those issues to government to then allow for them to create that environment for us to operate. And then how do you balance this global policy alignment while engaging the U.S. regulatory environment along with the congressional stakeholders. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, for us, um, you know, we're headquartered in Germany. So we have, um, you know, we have 18,000 people across the globe, um, different ideas um, where, you know, we're innovating um, for the markets in which we operate. And we also produce in the markets where we, you know, for example, in the United States, um, you know, a lot of our customers are right here, but we also take our products and they go overseas or they go into other countries um, where our customers will use them to refine them into, into additional products. And so for us, we need that alignment. We need to ensure that we're able to have that ability to um, have regulatory certainty and ensure that the standards are, are similar. And so we're advocating on, on the Hill for those types of, um, you know, a general alignment um, with, with certain standards that allow us then to have that um, that assurance internally that we can continue to grow That's right. um, from our U.S. base. So. Incredible. And so then we, we move on to misconceptions. Um, what are some of the biggest misconceptions about the chemical industry and the role you have in sustainability? Yeah. And how is Covestro working to change that? Absolutely. I mean, I think the one area that you know, I think folks like to think back to, you know, the smokestacks and the dirty um, outputs from from chemical facilities. Um, and, and, you know, in, in modern, in the modern era, that's just not the case. I, I, we're really proud of new technologies that we have on site to reduce our emissions. You know, we've set very ambitious global goals on greenhouse gas emission reduction. I um, mean, also reusing the water that we use on site. Um, you know, the, uh, and, and one example is that we bring water in, um, use it through our processes, and the water that comes out is cleaner than that which came in. So we have these technologies and we're working to scale them up. And here in the U.S. is a, is a great place to do that um, with the amount of um, investment and the amount of opportunity to do so. But I think for us, you know, our, our real goal is to continue to encourage both policymakers at the state, federal and local level to see that advantage um, and to showcase it for us. Because, you know, as, as an industry, we want to build and make our products here in the U.S. that we can then set the standard for everyone else. Our customers demand it. You know, our end customers want want newer, better, innovative technologies 
that allow them to then sell sell their products um, with that with those elements built in all the way through their production chain. And so, um, in order for us to to kind of change the the message, we see our our technologies as helping to enable the future. We think of a of a, a wind turbine on a windmill, for example, uh, the polymers used to make that, or think of a an electric vehicle, um, some of the panels and 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 the battery. Um, components they use there use our high tech materials, and so you can't do that without without using these new technologies. And so I think we continue to stress that as a as our as our journey to help enable a more sustainable and circular economy. Incredible, incredible perspective. And so, in terms of your internal communications, including your newsletter, your briefings, etc., how does that help build a more informed innovation? driven culture amongst yeah. your employees at Covestro. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think one thing that we've really worked to do um, is to to get the perspectives from folks all over the world. We also to share what we're doing here in the United States. Um, our, pol our, our folks, and especially, you know, here in the US and abroad um, in more senior levels, they really enjoy policy. They want to be part of it. Um, in this very complex regulatory and policy environment, um, they have to be engaged. And so, you know, it's the emphasis is on us to communicate everything that we see as a potential risk or an opportunity um, for us to pursue and using that, framing that in the lens of, of what we as, a, as an innovative company can do um, while also understanding some of those nuances. We take our strategic direction from our executives um, and is, if they're informed on, on how we can help to pursue to show them what the potential impacts of not taking action on a certain area or not being proactive, um, it, it, it does pose some reputational risk to us. And so I think for us, continuing to constantly educate our internal um, colleagues and get a better understanding from them what we need to be focusing on, um, it creates that internal communication and conversation. And then we can relay that back to policymakers. That's incredible. And so just a final question on advice. What advice would you provide to rising leaders interested in bridging science, policy, and business for public impact? Yeah, I mean, I think finding an organization that aligns with your goals. We're seeing that more and more that, that folks want, especially among the new generation, want to work in a place where they feel like they can have a purpose. And when we ask, well, how do you find purpose in like a chemical company, for example? And the reality is, is everything we've talked about, you know, we're enabling new technologies, bringing new technologies to the market that have real, a real capacity to help transform our economy and, and really continue to establish the United States as the place to do manufacturing. And so for me, you know, it, it's something that drove me to Covestro, but finding a, a place um, that really aligns with your own um, values and what you, how you feel that you can contribute to that mission um, I think it's critical and, and understanding, like you said, all of the intricate um, connections that we that we that we have to consider as we're, um, you know, bringing any product to market. What's the regulatory environment like? Who, who are the policymakers that are interested in this? Those are all very important to get an understanding of how of how a company can continue to be a leader and, and be innovative. And so. Um, really finding finding that organization that supports your 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 values, I think, is really key to that. Incredible, Daniel. And so, if folks want to find out more about Covestro, how, do, how can they do that? Yeah, sure. Um, you can visit our website, uh, covestro.com, and, and you know, directly outreach to me for sure. We can provide you with any information you need as well. Daniel Kolchik, Covestro, Thank you. changing the world. Thank you. One day at a time. Yep. Thank you.